welcome to the session so in this particular video we will talk about the implementation of depth first traversal right so so far we have discussed the logical intuition behind the same we have discussed in the last session the pseudo code as well and i hope that before coming to this particular session you already have tried at least once uh, with respect to the implementation of the depth first traversal so today let's take this example and with the help of this example can you tell me that what should be the answer you are expecting i hope now it is very much easy why because we already have discussed the pseudo code behind the same you can refer that pdf as well while answering this particular question so here if you will observe suppose my starting point is 5 so what i will do is that i'll start from 5 i'll say dft of 5 right and after that i will print 5 as well then i will just check the uh adjacent of 5 here if you will observe i am talking about a directed graph or you can say tree as well directed tree or you should say it's a graph only so i am talking about a directed graph what does that mean the simple meaning is that here the, the directions are given to us means 5 is going towards 3 and 4 3 and 7 sorry similarly 3 direction is 2 and 4 similarly 4 direction is 8 only similarly 7th direction is 8 only like that what i am saying is that 2 is not pointing to anything 2 is not pointing to anything it's blank so this is kind of a direction di directional graph where there is one side direction is given backward it is nothing now here if you will observe one thing when we are calling dft of 5 what will happen 5 will be printed what's the adjacent of this adjacent is 3 and 7 suppose i will move towards 3 so 3 is unvisited i will call dft of 3 so 3 will be printed now i will call adjacent of 3 which is 2 and 4 again here if you will observe 2 will get printed because it is one unvisited so because we are calling dft of 2 2 will get printed because it it is unvisited now what are the adjacents of 2 nothing right there is no as such adjacent of 2 so it will just return the next value is 4 so 4 is unvisited now what will happen dft of 4 will be called here if you will observe once you will call this you will make them visited and you will print this now what is the adjacent of 4 here if you will observe always it's in a directional part so fourth adjacent is not 3 it is 8 so the value of w is equals to 8 again here if you will observe it is again not visited so dft of 8 will be called now what will happen again the value of 8 will get printed and now what will happen what is the adjacent of 8 nothing i can say can i say so it will just get get returned it will just get returned it will just get returned and finally we are left with 3 is done 7 is unvisited so finally we will call dft of 7 and now 7 will also get visited what is the adjacent of 7 it is 8 i would say but it's already visited so finally it will be returned so this is the kind of output that we are expecting can we say so in a way that we already have discussed also in our last class that whenever we are calling about dft recursion is something which plays a very vital role until or unless the node is not visited we will keep on calling that recursive function now what i will do here is that i'll try to show you the implementation of the same by taking the same example so first of all let me write the driver code where i will just define the graph using the adjacency list so here we are storing the data of the graph using the adjacency adjacency list so here if you will observe graph is equals to i can define within a key value pair so here the vertex is 5 and corresponding to i would say 5 what is the adjacent values or the vertex that i have i think it is 3 and 7 right so it is 3 followed by 
3 followed by I would say 7. Similarly, uh, I will write for other vertices also. So I have uh, created the graph on another screen as well. So I am just seeing the structure and accordingly I am just writing down the vertex and then after that I will show you 2 and 4. After that I will be having 7 vertex which is linked with the vertex number 8. After that I am having I would say 2 vertex which is I would say linked with nothing. After that I will be having 4 which is linked with the vertex 8. After that I will be having I would say uh, 8 which is I would say linked with nothing. So this is the complete end-to-end -end graph that we have, right? Now what I will do is that I will call the function depth uh, first traversal, depth first traversal and inside that I can simply pass the visited array or you can take it as a set and you can just keep on adding the nodes which are already visited. After that the graph that we have and after that the initialization part suppose I am initializing with 5. Here I need to do one thing because I didn't define the visited thing so I can take it as a set so it will not contain the duplicates. So it will only contain only those nodes which are already visited. Here if you will observe if I will just show you now 5 is connected with 3 and 4. After that 3 is connected to 2 and 4. After that 7 is connected to 8. 4 is connected to 8. Right? So this, so this is what I have written. 7 is connected to 8. 4 is connected to 8. Apart from that other vertices are not connected to any other vertex in a directional graph. So here we will be having the directed graph. So this is how these things will happen. Now this is something which I can say is the function calling. This is something which I can say is the function calling. Now let's talk about the function definition. Right? Here we can define the function name as depth first traversal itself and what I can do here is that I can write it as a node which is the starting point we all know. Right? Now what we can do we can simply check that if this node is not visited so if this node is not in a visited set then what we supposed to do we supposed to first of all print that particular node right I can just make it some spacing so that it will be properly visible to everyone and after that what I can do I can simply add this as a part of a visited node so this node will be added inside the visited set that we have now what we can do this part is done. Now the next important thing that we supposed to do is to look for the adjacent nodes which are present for that particular node. So what I will do for I would say adjacent uh, nodes which are present inside the graph corresponding to that particular node which I have. If I will just check one thing. If suppose they are not visited. Right. So what we supposed to do at that point of time? At that point of time we need to call the recursive function again. So what we can do we can say that if that adjacent node is uh, not in visited what we supposed to do we supposed to call this recursive function again. Now instead of writing this uh, node I will write the adjacent node right I think this is making pretty much sense with the pseudocode that we have written in the last video I am also also just referring to that, that pseudocode also while writing the code so let's try to see what we are getting first uh, 3 corresponds to 2 comma 4 is the invalid syntax why because I haven't mentioned the comma so let me write the comma here. Now it should be fine. Now we are getting the value as 532487. Let me just verify this with the PDF. 532487. Perfect. Right? So this is what
we are trying to achieve in this particular code i hope this is making sense right i hope that you guys already have understood this code because this is exactly what i have written in the last video so here if you will observe we are just checking that if it is not in a visited part just print it and then just add it right and now we are looking for the adjacent nodes which are there inside the uh, graph after that if they are not visited here actually comes the concept of recursive call so recursion coming into picture in case of this depth first traversal which we are mentioning here getting my point so i hope that this part is pretty much clear to everyone so you can also mention something like uh depth first or you can say dft of the given graph is and after that you can just print this oops so it will print like this no it's not looking good because it is again and again going inside so what we can do instead of this is um uh, we can do one thing instead of printing inside this we can also print uh, taking this result and we can return that but i don't want to do the same thing just because of the indentation purpose so i think that the logical part is pretty much clear to everyone right basically what you supposed to understand in this particular case is that how logically the depth first traversal will work how it is taking the concept of recursion here and here because recursion is coming into picture so automatically stack data structure we are using to store the function calls here right to store i would say the function calls i hope that i am making sense to everyone right so with this i would like to end this particular session in the next upcoming part of the video we will talk now about the breadth first traversal how it's working uh what is the major difference between that breadth first traversal and the thing that we have discussed just now about the depth uh, uh breadth first traversal and the depth first traversal the major difference between these two because i have listened a lot of queries students usually get confused between these two approaches but i would say that these two approaches are completely different if you know the concept pretty well right so with this i would like to in this particular session uh hope to see you all in my next upcoming video where now i will talk about the breadth first traversal happy learning to all bye bye every, everyone and take care